Hello everybody. My name is Emma. I am a wife, a stay-at-home mom, and in my in this channel we are talking about mostly marriages and like I'm doing content around my home, I'm doing things like basically on my life. Sometimes I do vlogs, sometimes I just sit down like this and talk because mostly I like to talk about marriages and then I like us to look marriages in the, in the lens of God, what God designed marriages to be, what, what was the purpose of God when he looked at marriages in an extent. I always, as I've said in, in this channel, that I've always loved to, to listen to people who talk about marriages and I've always listened to people, marriage counselors, especially. Um, I always loved and loved and loved, like as a young girl, I don't know the reason behind me listening to them or watching their their videos or listening to listening to them on TV even still now as old I am as now I am also in a marriage I still do listen to people who are talking mostly about marriages but most my desire is to see marriages prosper is to see marriages be what God wanted marriages to be not the the version that we see in this earth that we are living i know that people are looking marriages in the lens of the world they are defining marriages in the lens of the world and i also know that there are people in the house of the lord in the church spiritual people i would say religious people who are using marriages who, who are using the word of god to how can I put it? To abuse their partners. I want us to look to th this way that for better, for worse. I wanted to do a video the last few days concerning that. I wanted to do a live stream so that people will come in we and we have a discussion what people think about for better, for worse. Why? Why for better, for worse? What was the reason? when those people who were writing those because i have never found anything maybe i'm wrong i've never found this in the bible maybe there is but what what i know is that what god said about marriage marriage concerning marriages so i want us to look at this why for better and for worse why was why was it so emphasized when we do our marriage vows? What do you think when they say for better, for worse? Because other people, they use that term or they use that word to abuse other people because they say for better, for worse. You don't have to leave me because God hates divorce. I can behave anyhow because you said for better, for worse. I can cheat on you and you can still stay because for better, for worse. Why, especially Christian people, especially the people that go to church, I'm not stop, as I've said in my previous video, people who fear God will listen to what God says. People who, who fear, who understand the principle of the union of marriage will understand what that means. People in the church, they tend to use the word of God against other believers, against their spouse, to abuse them because when you are going through stuff, they tell you pray, 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 pray. I believe in prayer. I understand prayer works and I know that prayer works but sometimes people misbehave because knowing that they can use that against you and they can
I'm sorry about that, guys. I had to to close because um, as I've said, I'm a mother, I'm a wife. There are people that, that are with me in the house. But I want to make, to, to, to give us this challenge, all of us, what is it when, when people who are in the union of marriage, they misbehave, they cheat, and they, they abuse you emotionally, financially, and they take your feelings for granted, and they use the word of God against you. Why it is when we go to pastors, go for counseling, go for all the areas, the only thing that they tell you is this, God hates divorce. And yes, God hates divorce, I understand. I know I am the one, I am in the body of Christ. I understand and I know. But that does not give a person to a right to abuse you because of that weight because using that weight against you using people they they don't want to make sacrifices for their marriages to work then behave anyhow because they will stick to this for better for worse i know i'm talking like i'm, I'm i want to emphasize this I want us to understand that even if it says for better, for worse, it does not give anyone a right to treat anybody somehow because you are in this union together and God hates divorce. As I've said in my last video, I've said that if we, we both fear the weight, we understand and we listen to the weight, we fear God, we understand what was God. What was the purpose of God when creating marriages? Because God knew, God knows us people. He knows that we are weak. That is why he, he, he given us the way to guide us, the way to, to give us principles how to live. That is why in the way you will go, you will find this way it says, the marriage bed should be respected by both parties. So you find someone going against that weight and he will come back or she will come back and say because the weight says this so because the weight says God hates divorce you don't have to divorce me even if I disrespect the marriage bed we all go through stuff we all we all understand certain things certain ways but there are things that they are so emotional when you are hurt in that areas of your life it, it is not easy to come back no matter you besides that god intervene besides that you take everything and you give it to god and god be the center of your marriage because nothing can ever fix a broken heart without God. We can do everything. We can say everything. But if a marriage vow is broken, besides God intervening or God coming in and helping both parties to heal, and if God helps the people that... I know, let me just pause a little bit. I know that there's a saying that says, God helps those who help themselves, right? In my, in my culture, around my place, when concerning to like spiritual things, when they want to go maybe to consult Inyanga or they want to consult a witch doctor and they will say, I'm sick, um, I'm being bewitched, I, I need to get help and I can go somewhere and um, get help somewhere so they will use that way i also believe that no not that but I'm, i also believe that god can give us things in, at our disposal god can give us instruction but god will never force us to follow them if we don't want to follow them it is our own responsibility because once you are in the marriage, you, you are solely responsible.
responsible to make that marriage work. God cannot do it well. God cannot force you to make the marriage work if you don't want to. God can tell you this is your partner, this is your love, life partner, this is the person that I've chosen for you. But a person can decide, I want, I, I just want to, to disobey God and do my own thing and the consequences of this, it will show. I'm saying, what, what it is, what do you think, how, let me put it this way, what do you think when they say for better, for worse? For what to you, what that it represents? What are you saying or what are your thoughts concerning that particular question? We can argue, we can say many things, but God has given us an instruction. God has given us a, a manual. God has said it how and how he has given us the how to be to have a successful marriage. That is why when they say we are making when they give you the marriage vows. Oh God, let me just pause a little bit. I know I'm fast. I'm I'm very, very fast. Because when I I have something in my chest, I just want to take it out, like, get over it. Let me pause a little bit. When they say, we are, when we are standing before the, the pastor, you are saying, you are taking the vow before men and before God. You are putting God into your agreement. You are agreeing before him. When you choose to, to, to dis, disobey, when you choose to disobey God, now it seems like you are spitting in the face of God. You are saying, what you are saying, God, does not work. The thing that works is the way I know how to, you, to work it. I know how to make my marriage successful. When you decide and you call yourself a Christian, when you decide and say, I know everything, I can fix my marriage, I know how to fix my own marriage to work, then you are saying, God, I don't want your manual. I want to do it myself. Because if you are in a union of, union of a marriage, you are abusing someone and God has given you a clear instruction. You decide to, to disobey God. Then you are saying, God, I don't need you in this marriage. But you have made a vow before him. You invited him into your marriage. But when things are not going your way, or invited into your marriage, you go out and you decide to solve it your way. God has given us a clear instruction about marriages. Church, children of God, let us take God for his weight. Let us listen for, to him and understand when he tells us what to do. Children of God, we cannot as I've said, we cannot be successful and happy in a marriage where God is not involved. We want people can do make it outside and do it their own way. That's their way. But when you are in the church and when you say you know God, when you say you understand what God wants, when you understand what is the union of marriage, then you turn around and do something else. Some would say marriage is a calling. Some would say marriage is a, a ministry. Because in the union of a marriage, many things are happening there. You are supposed to, ra to, to raise godly children in that marriage. 
children, your children, they supposed to look up to you so that they will also raise their kids in a way that they've seen you as their role model. They should understand what marriage is like. If my daughter will say, I want to be like my mother when I get married. I want to find a husband like my father when I get married. If my son can say, I want a wife like my mother, then I've done my part. But if my son says, I don't want a wife like my mother, I have failed before God, I have failed before men, and I've also failed before my, ch my children. I, I have also killed them. They, underst they will understand marriage in a different way. So we, have, we, we, we are given a responsibility to ourselves, to our kids, to the society that we live amongst. Because imagine, as a child of God, being discussed in a tavern. Imagine being a child of God, being discussed around your village. Imagine what that does to the word of God. You are saying, I am a child of God. You are saying things that you prophesy with your mouth and say, I know God. I, you even preach, stand before the people. But outside you are living a different life. How many people are you killing? I don't want us to move away from this topic. I want us to understand when they say for better, for worse. We sacrifice. We understand. We make this marriage work as, as best as we can. Because we have agreed to be in this marriage for better, for worse. Ah, oh, I've been talking like, talking, okay. and I've been very fast. I'm sorry guys, I just wanted to make this quick video and I wanted, I, I just, if you have to pause and, I know, I, I, I think very fast and sometimes when I talk, I skip other things that uh, I, I've been thinking. But I wanted, I'm, I'm just like, like my, 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 my I, I don't know, but, so, I will say to all that are in the union of marriage, look down, deep down, inside your heart, and understand and take a deep look into your mind before you get into marriage or when you are in the marriage. Make sure that you go in with a clear, clear mind what marriage is and you know that it will never be a honeymoon always. It will be all those things that you will, end, you will go in never expected them. To happen but it will happen go in understanding that you are getting married to a person not a perfect person because the word of God even tells us nobody is perfect we are striving to be to go into perfection people have their mistakes but the, uh, the one thing that I want us to understand is that our mistake should not be the mistakes that will destroy someone's happiness. If it happened, you did a mistake, be bold enough to accept your mistake, ask forgiveness, and try to fix your mistake, and try not to repeat that mistake again. Try not to repeat again, and make sure that you open all doors for conversation, for healing, for for everything that you know that whatever you do you put yourself in you pray about it you work on it until it, it becomes what you want it to be 
but if you are in it and you say I'm sorry but you continue to live somehow so it shows that you are not fully in that in that and I've said I've, I've counted emotional abuse spiritual abuse financial abuse physical abuse those are the things that as I've said in my in my last week I thought that physical abuse was bad but emotional abuse financial abuse sp spiritual abuse so those things they cut so deep they cut so deep a person may not hit you a person may not may 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 not hit you physically but i'm telling you when a person abuses abuses you emotionally it is something else and i will try my level best i'm not an expert i've said many times i'm not an expert but i'm just giving my opinion this is my personal opinion this is me giving you what i've experienced what i've seen what i've heard other people going through but most of all when looking into the word of god and trying to understand what marriage is and then i've realized that we have understood marriage in a very very wrong way i'm saying this not because i am bitter not because i am as i've said I like i come against the body of Christ. I'm, I'm saying this out of love because we need to tell each other the truth. We need to, to, to hold each other accountable for our decisions and the way we, we, we live our life amongst our community, amongst our children, amongst the people that we are living amongst them. I hope this video is not too long. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again into the, another video. I love you so much guys. Stay blessed. I love you with the love of God. And always don't remember that God loves you, loves you, loves you. Ah.